This is serious and thoughtful legislation. From the state capitol to our nation's capitol. I asked my colleagues, do they have courage? We saw big developments in the battle over rules to reshape our elections, how the decisions by lawmakers could lead to changes in Texas. It's very difficult for, for us to continue this work without any type of resources. Sheriffs along the border come to the state capitol to ask for help, what lawmakers could do to open up funding and jails amid a surge of migrants crossing into Texas. Counterfeit pills laced with fentanyl changed one family's life forever. There's a huge piece of my heart that is gone. It will never come back. What these parents want to see in Texas schools to help save young lives. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Hinkle. We saw big developments in the battle over the rules for elections in Texas, both at the state capitol and our nation's capitol. While state lawmakers worked to push forward Republican-led legislation to tighten election laws in Texas, Democrats in Congress led a push for a federal law that would supersede those restrictions. Every single voting rights reauthorization, Republicans and Democrats stood together, not as Republicans and Democrats, but as Americans. I asked my colleagues, do they have courage? Texas Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee helped lead the effort to approve the John Lewis Act. Some Texas House Democrats who were still in D.C. also called on Congress to take action. We left Texas because we knew the fix was in. We knew the writing on the wall that they were not, that all they were trying to do was make it harder to vote. They were not trying to increase or expand access to the ballot box. So we did all that we could do, and we left Texas and came to Washington because the answer is here. Later that evening, House Democrats answered the call for action. The John Lewis Voting Rights Act passed the House. The final tally went along party lines, 219 Democrats voting in favor, 212 Republicans voting no. The bill faces a huge obstacle in the Senate. Democrats control that chamber, but they don't have enough votes to overcome a Republican filibuster. That means the John Lewis Act is unlikely to come up for a final vote in the Senate. That put the focus back on the Texas House, where lawmakers on Thursday took up the Republican election bill. Democrats had blocked it for weeks by breaking quorum. As Monica Madden shows us, the lead up to the vote brought out tension in the chamber. This is serious and thoughtful legislation. There's no reason for this bill. During Thursday's House debate on a sweeping elections bill, lawmakers asked themselves, when did this topic become political? It has never been partisan up until the last decade. But partisan jabs characterized the 12 hour long debate. Outbursts outburst are inappropriate. Republicans defended their bill, saying it adds safeguards for election security. It's common sense reforms to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat. In the 2020 election, some counties implemented drive through or 24 hour voting because of the pandemic. And Republicans think the law should go back to pre pandemic standards. Drive through voting, a real problem with that was there's no secret ballot when there's two or three or four people in the car looking over your shoulder. One Democrat asked the House bill's author if any such instances happened in 2020. Just not advised, you're, but you're unaware. I'm unaware at this okay, time. Yeah. Okay. Democrats believe most of the legislation is in response to disproven claims that the 2020 election was stolen. Voter fraud was virtually non-existent. This is not because of the 2020 election. Only one Republican voted against the bill. Representative Lyle Larson taking to Twitter saying the bill is a quote, solution to a problem that does not exist. Capitol reporter Monica Madden joins us now. This vote came after months of partisan battles highlighted by House Democrats breaking quorum. What was the mood in the chamber during the debate? Well, Josh, as you can imagine, it was really tense because this is a controversial bill that Democrats and Republicans just both do not see eye to eye on. And, you know, keeping in mind that this was the same bill that Democrats thought was so bad that they had to flee the state to Washington, D.C. to try to block. So it was, you know, more than 12 hours of back and forth making very charged attacks at one of another one one another yeah we heard the speaker uh, ask members to avoid using the word racism while debating the bill where did that come from and how did the speaker's request really um, affect the debate yeah well at the at the beginning as usual speaker Phelan reminded his members hey let's you know keep this civil um, and that didn't necessarily play out but Democrats on this bill specifically have said that it will disproportionately 
impact minorities who are um, wanting to cast their cast their vote. And at one point, Representative Gina Hinojosa, she's a Democrat, she was asking one of her colleagues, is intentional discrimination, can you define that as racism, trying to make a point? And Speaker Phelan interjected and said, hey, you know, we can talk about this bill without accusing our colleagues of being racist. But again, this all spurring from Democrats' um, perception that this will have a disparate impact on minority voters. Now, as you mentioned, the House debate took a 12-hour time period. Members took up more than 60 amendments. Democrats didn't have much success changing the bill. What did that long debate really accomplish? Well, House Republicans got what they wanted. They were able to pass the bill. It passed 79 to 37 with one Republican actually voting no. That was Representative Lyle Larson of San Antonio. But for Democrats, they had a lot of attempts to soften the bill with amendments that they proposed that they thought would make the language, you know, more more appealing and have a better better impact, if you will. Um, but they were unsuccessful in the majority of those efforts. And you know, this was something from the top that Republicans said they want to they want to keep a, the bill as is. They liked it. They had you know drafted it the way they wanted. And I spoke to Senator Brian Hughes about this, who was the original offer author of SB one. But we're not going to make changes to the bill. We're not going to make bad policy just to get folks to come to work. We're going to try to get a good bill, the best bill we can get. Now, Democrats were able to have one win on an amendment. It was an amendment that they think will help uh, Texans with disabilities when they're heading to the polls. That one specifically will not restrict disabled voters if they want to request accommodations when they're heading to the polls or voting by absentee. And then Representative Murr, Republican, also added an amendment, probably one of the most significant changes to this bill, and that one would notify voters of mistakes in their absentee ballot request process so election officials could let them know so they have time to fix that and make sure they still get their absentee ballot. All right, Monica Madden, thank you very much. Thank you, Josh. From guns to the grid and loosening rules on marijuana and alcohol, we'll look at some of the new state laws set to take effect just days from now. One new law aims to make it more difficult to get an abortion in Texas, why that's already leading to legal challenges beyond what we've seen in the past and a call for help from law enforcement along the border. How a new bill could provide the funding they want, but also the potential for new problems. 